Well, this is it, all you passengers. It's our final episode of the Wayne Train. We're going to look to complete a quadruple as we play our last two games of the season and two finals. First up, the FA Cup. We will look to get some revenge on Arsenal before we take on Napoli in the Champions League final. Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 43, the last one of the Wayne Train here on Sean Does FM with Plymouth Fargal. I hope you're doing well and if you're looking forward to those two big games coming up in today's episode, the FA Cup Final, where we take on Arsenal a rematch from last season's final, which we did lose before we take on Napoli in our first Champions League final, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up. On the video and if you've enjoyed the series here on the channel make sure to also hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well so you're notified when those new videos do come out for our next series which is a build a nation out of New Zealand involving new A-League team out of Auckland we'll put them in the game early and also there should be some different videos also coming out on the channel next year as well that will hopefully be quite interesting a little bit different to stuff that I have done here on the channel in the past but coming out today two big games are going to get straight into the action because first up off the back of securing the Premier League title in yesterday's episode albeit we did leave it quite late and also making our way through to the Champions League final with a win in the second leg over Man City if you missed the episode I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner we take on the team who pushed us closest in that race for the Premier League title and they finished three points behind us thankfully just did enough to keep in front of them and that is Arsenal and they're also the team that beat us in last season's FA Cup final. If we go over and have a look at the data hub, you will see it. Third down from the bottom, it was an entertaining game, but unfortunately we did lose it for free. Hopefully this season we can get the job done, especially because two of the goal scorers from that game for Arsenal and two of their best players so far this season actually missing with injury for this FA Cup final. If Gabriel Martinelli and Bakayo Saka are out, that could be a big blow for those guys. All of a sudden, this actually looks like potentially quite a winnable final for us. Hopefully, can keep our quadruple hopes alive, albeit fair to say, if I had to only win one game in today's episode, I think we'd prefer it to be the Champions League final when we do take on Napoli. But we've also got two injuries, albeit. It will just keep these players out for the FA Cup final. It won't affect them for the Champions League. Asama Sorrelli's out with some pulled ankle ligaments and Serginho Dest with a twisted ankle. But so far this season, our record against Arsenal actually quite good. We bet them at the Emirates 4-1 in the first half of the season and then 2-1 a couple of months ago. And what at the time did feel like it might be a title deciding game. So hopefully we can make it three wins from three against these guys to cap off this season domestically. And we'll come back shortly and look to complete a domestic treble against Arsenal in this season's FA Cup final. And here are the team sheets for this year's FA Cup final. There are Arsenal. They come to this one in some really good form, but obviously do look a little bit weaker than usual out on the wings with those injuries to Martinelli and Saka. In terms of us, just one change to our usual first choice level Mosquera, starting at right back with no Serginho Dest. Also the loney from Benfica and Spencer. He makes his way onto the bench, but otherwise we're at full strength and hopefully can make up for last year and keep those quadruple hopes alive. And in fact, very early highlight here for Arsenal, a free kick which Smith Rowe will take from near enough to the corner spot. Puts this one far post for SMS and it's a dreadful start. Only two minutes into the FA Cup final here at Wembley, we go 1-0 down. And just like last season, this is already threatening to potentially be a little bit of a goal fest. But that is a soft goal to concede. Unfortunately, no one there at the far post can outjump SMS. It does look like the it was Som and Gutierrez who got out left for the ball and we go 1-0 down early. Albeit it doesn't take us too long to get a chance here ourselves with a corner just past the 10 minute mark. Albeit poor pass there looking for Ilyev on the edge of the box and Declan Rice there did have a chance to do something on the counter attack but thankfully Ilyev tracks back quite nicely our striker of all people and we do look here to hold on to the ball and hopefully strike back nice and quickly if we go 2-0 down that would not be ideal. Ideally we want to keep that winning momentum going into that Champions League final against Napoli, albeit that does actually look like a somewhat winnable final considering our form so far this season and that competition in particular so far. Ran a bit of an Italian gauntlet 
in the Champions League. But the Wayne Train here on the edge of the box puts that one to Samadzic. And he finds Aliyev, who of course won that ball further back in the field from Declan Rice. And he tucks that one away past Aaron Ramsdale at his near post. And thankfully, not behind for too long here in this season's FA Cup final. The Wayne Train starts the gas there a bit on the front foot, picks out Samadzic who can just weave a nice pass there to Ilyev to beat Ramsdale at that near post. And just shy of the 15-minute mark, it's all square at one all. And things are definitely quieting down off the back of those opening two goals inside the first 15 minutes. No highlights since then, albeit a couple minutes shy of half time. Arsenal here, they do have a goal kick. Do look to make their way here out from the back. And Tomiyasu finds some space down their right-hand side. But thankfully, Gutierrez wins that ball back for us. But then was looking there, I think, for Ilyev. Couldn't quite find him, but then Arsenal try and get on the attack themselves. A poor pass yet again, Gutierrez, with an interception. But again, we give the ball away there a little bit softly. Now, Simon Som, though, nice ball there after winning the ball to Ilyev. It takes a good deflection, and he will pick up his 32nd goal of the season. He's won away now for tying the club record for goals in the season, I believe, from Jack Cobb. But that is great work there from Som. Picks out Ilyev, who's just enough. In behind that Arsenal defence, takes on the show himself, and thankfully he did, didn't look to square it for the Wayne train, because that deflection was enough to take it past Ramsdale here. Tomiyasu was on the ball, but Simon Som wins it from him, passes with his first touch, and Ilyev will pick up a double. And despite the fact this first half has been pretty even stats-wise, we'll go into the sheds with a 2-1 lead, and hopefully this season we can hold on to that and lift the FA Cup for the first time here at Plymouth Argo to be fair. Everyone's playing quite well, but don't think any changes are needed. So we'll get the second half underway with the same 11 and that 2-1 advantage. And a very early corner for us here in the second half as we try and make it. 3-1 Parola gets his head on the end of that corner from Aaron Kunda, but unfortunately the woodwork there just denies us a goal. And now down the other end, SMS with a free kick, looking for a double. And that one also comes off the woodwork. So two chances there for both teams from set piece. Neither find the back of the net, and we're still at 2-1 in front. And shortly off the back of those chances to both teams, now down the other end here, for a chance, and we're going to put that ball far post through Aaron Kundu, and this time we do hit the target. Lamar Samadzic, of course, back from that injury now. He makes it 3-1. Off the back of that, we might just try and play things a little bit safe here, put both our defensive midfielders on to defend, slow down the tempo a little bit, and also be more disciplined. Won't start time-wasting yet, because still just over 30 minutes left. In this FA Cup final, but with a two-goal lead, hopefully we'll learn from the mistakes that we made in last year's final and this time actually hold on and pick up a win. But that ball, very nice there for Samadzic at the far post, and that header was top right corner. And we now grab a buffer goal here and make it 3-1. But on the hour mark, it is Arsenal here with a chance to try and hit back as they look to play out from the back. Zinchenko there at left back turns and plays that one back to Saliba. Havertz there. Nearly gets himself into a bit of trouble. Good press in there. Ramsdale pumps it deep. But thankfully Mosquera, good control there. And now we get a chance to hopefully grab one more goal. Which should be enough for us to make sure we're going to lift the FA Cup at the end of this one at Wembley. Mosquera there. Far post for Ilyev. Looking for that hat trick in an FA Cup final. But unfortunately that one's just by the target. And it's still 3-1. Albeit now Simon Som picks up a yellow card. So I think it's time for us to make our first sub. Adam Randall can come on for him, but in a strong position with that 3-1 lead. And only a couple of minutes on from that first substitution, now it's a throw in here for Arsenal inside of the final third, and Declan Rice there makes his way inside the box. Good clean tackle, it looked like there from Mosquera, but the referee has blown for a penalty that does seem very harsh. We are going to wait for a VAR check, but usually these don't get overturned. But that one does, VAR might be on our side for this one. To be fair, that tackle did look nice and clean. Thankfully, VAR agreed, so we're still 3-1 up. And in fact, very short left back of that VAR decision, now a couple of our players are down to Red Hearts, right backs, and both wingers. So we're going to bring on here Spencer at right back. That might be a little bit risky, but hopefully he can handle this. And also Whitaker at right wing and Thurius out left. Still 3-1 up inside the last 20 minutes. And yet again, almost immediately off the back of that most recent batch of substitutions, there is a highlight here. Arsenal with a goal kick, and they take it short and do look to build from the back. Declan Rice starts to make his way into our half rather easily. Now Martin Odegaard is back on the ball, plays that one over to Dedic. Nice through ball there. Spencer tries to get a touch on that, but unfortunately it falls to Ethan Wainanade, and he will put that one away to give Arsenal a chance here. 
with only 15 minutes left off the back of that, we might just change back to our usual style in terms of tempo, also put our DLP onto support, but we'll just still be a bit more disciplined and just hope that that means we're not going to give up any more goals because to be fair, that attack that was quite good in the first half hasn't really been there since we did make those changes off the back of taking that 3-1 lead early in this second half. So we'll make those changes just to hopefully make sure that Arsenal don't gain too much momentum off the back of that slightly fortunate goal, but they are certainly back in this one. Only one goal down with about 10 minutes left, and now Goody is down to a red heart. Jacob Graves will come on for him as we look to hold on here and pick up the FA Cup after Arsenal deny us last season. And now that we're making our way into the last 10 minutes, might be time for us to drop that tempo, go back to what we were doing before. Also tell our goalkeeper to slow the pace down and just see if we can just frustrate them here in the later stages of this game. There might be a highlight off the back of that Parola on the ball, plays it back to Tobias. We'll see if this is a meaningful highlight or just a waste of time one that can sometimes happen off the back of trying to adjust some tactical instructions. Nice ball forward there though for Graves from Farias, but unfortunately he was offside. It was a waste of time highlight, but immediately off the back of that, we do see the free kick to Arsenal. But sloppy on the ball, though, a bit of an interesting free kick option, and we get a chance to do something here on the counter-attack. Whitaker starts to make his way out towards the sideline. Thankfully, Spencer eventually starts to make a run. Good ball forward there in the Wayne train. Might get a chance. Squares it nicely for Nikola Ilyev, and that was a big chance for his hat-trick. But unfortunately, decent save from Ramsdale comes off the woodwork. Scott there with a pretty cynical foul off the back of that, but thankfully doesn't pick up a card. And now we're inside the last five minutes of this one. We'll slow down the tempo even more. Go to a mid block and also tell our guys to time waste frequently. And hopefully there'll be enough for us to make sure we can hold on to this one goal advantage. But yet again, off the back of those adjustments, there is a highlight. We were looking there to get on the attack, but unfortunately can't quite do anything. And Arsenal with a chance will be a poor clearance there. And Graves will pick that one up down the left-hand side. Facundo Farias now is on the ball, does quite well there to get past Ben White. We'll play that one in for Morgan Whitaker, one of the OGs from the save, has been here from the start, and he scores a goal, bottom left corner, and hopefully that is the goal to make sure that we are going to pick up our first FA Cup here at Plymouth Argyle, and at the very least, pick up a domestic treble. Good week there from Farias to beat Ben White, and Morgan Whitaker just sneaks that one into the bottom left corner, that makes it 4-2, and as I said, that should be the goal now to wrap up the FA Cup, and shortly off the back of that, there's actually a free kick here in our favour. Farias at the far post for Jacob Graves off the bench. He'll also score, so a couple of hits for us in this one, 5-2. That will be all over Red Rover, and the FA Cup now definitely coming back to home park, and we will get a chance to complete the quadruple in the Champions League final. No stopping that header. It's right into that top left corner. Nothing Ramsdale can do about that one. We make our way into eight minutes of added time. and might actually be a chance here for us to make it 6-2. We go near post. Diamonde not far away with that header, but that time not quite on target. Off the back of that, we are going to see this highlight header. Arsenal, who really are now just looking for a consolation goal. But thankfully, we kept the foot down for most of this game, unlike last year where Arsenal did stage a bit of a comeback. Decent chance there too late, but they just missed the target there in that last highlight, but thankfully we are going to pick up the FA Cup here to go alongside that EFL Cup and the Premier League, and this time we get a trophy lift, unlike yesterday's episode when we picked up the Premier League, still a little bit dirty about that, but thankfully we make up for last season when Arsenal beat us 4-3 in this FA Cup final this season. We will win it and complete a domestic treble, as I said, hopefully now can go on and beat Napoli in the Champions League final. But yet another Wembley success for us here at Plymouth Argyle this season as we lift the FA Cup off the back of a 5-2 win in the final over Arsenal. So a nice bit of revenge for us there first up. In today's episode off the back of last season's FA Cup final this time around, we do beat Arsenal, as you can see. That does complete a domestic treble. Also, bottom right corner, as I mentioned, Nikola Ilyev needs just one goal in the Champions League final to equal Jack Cock as the record goal scorer for Plymouth Argyle in a season two goals, and he will break that record. That would be quite a nice way as well to finish the save, but we are going to now try and lift the Champions League, albeit one more injury off the back 
of that first game today, it did come in training. Mike Cooper with a sports hernia. He is out for four weeks, so it does mean that young Adam Lindley does step up from our under-21s team, albeit a couple of players are coming back, as we suggested before, in Osama Salawi and Serginho Dest, but it is going to be yet another Italian team that we take on this season. In the Champions League, Nico Kovacs Napoli, we will meet in the final. These guys, they finished second in Serie A this season behind AC Milan, but they did finish above both Inter Milan and Roma, the two teams we had to get past in the knockouts of the Champions League prior to Manchester City. So hopefully we can get the job done over yet another Italian team. But it's going to be easier said than done. Napoli with some very good players on their books, including the Georgian winger, I believe. He is still at the club. Apparently no vice captain, but no doubt it will be a strong Napoli team looking to lift the Champions League just like us for the first time. We'll come back shortly and hopefully complete a famous quadruple for the Wayne train as we take on Napoli in the Champions League final. And here are the team sheets for this season's Champions League final, our last game of the Wayne train. We're going still with our 4-2-4. Just one change from that FA Cup final and it is that Serginho Dest comes in at right back. Mosquera can drop down to an extended bench. Napoli, some good players in that team, but they are going very defensive with five at the back and two defensive midfielders. Hopefully, we can try and find some gaps in that defense with our attackers and make it a quadruple here at Plymouth Argyle and for the Wayne train. And we've just gone past the halfway point here of the first half so far. A very quiet game. As you can see, both teams with similar amount of shots, but none on target. Albeit at the 25-minute mark, there might be a highlight here as Napoli did have a throw, and albeit some poor passing. And we get the ball back there down our right-hand side. Now Samadzic tries to make his way into the final third. He plays that back pass there, interestingly, for Som. It's a poor one. And the block with a chance to get Napoli on the attack plays that one back to Di Lorenzo, the captain at right back there. Unfortunately, he does fall to Diop, then finds its way to Giacomo Raspadori. The assistant referee's flag the far side has not gone up, and yet again, we might have conceded from the first highlight of the game, and indeed we have, not ideal, especially as Samadzic, really poor back pass there before, looking for Simon Solomon from the Napoli, do get us on the counter-attack. A little bit fortunate how the ball did fall to their players, but still, Raspadori, nice little run there in behind of our defense from that ball from Diop. And we go 1-0 down, just shy of the half-hour mark. And things might be about to get from bad to worse for us only a few minutes later. Napoli here with a free kick, but thankfully we hit that one away. And of all players, Parola with a chance here to get us on the counter-attack. Actually makes his way into the final third, which is interesting. Plays that ball far post for Samadzic. Napoli hit that one away, but thankfully this time we keep the ball. Som fires that one into the Wayne train, his 50th goal of the season, and he has scored in a Champions League final. Big time player is the Wayne train. Off the back of that, we'll just cancel and see if that cancels out the shot. I did off the back of conceding the first goal. It doesn't, so that's a little bit frustrating, but now we can encourage our boys in the Wayne train in particular. Simon Som there somehow finds him. And that shot does take a pretty big deflection from a Napoli defender. But it was going to go on target. And the Wayne Train will score a goal in a Champions League final. Let's just bask in that for a little bit. Or not, because Anguissa has made it 2-1 Napoli only a few minutes later. Seriously, if M, you could just let me just enjoy that moment for a few more minutes in game. But no, it's a set piece for Napoli. They put it far post and kind of like... In the FA Cup final, this time on our right-hand side, but we get our jump there at the far post, and just like that, the Wayne train goal gets cancelled out, and we trail again, this time by two goals to one. And that was it for the first half, three highlights, four free goals, but unfortunately, despite the fact that the Wayne train has scored a goal, which we will always cherish, we are 2-1 behind off the back of those efforts from Raspadori and Anguisa, but a few players outright struggling for us here, so Mosquera can come on for Dest, and also Whitaker. For Samadzic, of course, not a good pass in the lead up to that first goal. We we'll just make those couple of changes and hopefully try and turn this around in the second half as we trail by a goal. And just about to make our way now up to the hour mark in this game, the Mosquera there for Napoli has picked up a yellow card, but it might be time for us to do something we've done over the last couple of episodes when trailing in games. We'll chuck our wing backs onto attack and just see if that will help us out. Also, go a bit wider in terms of attack and see if that will help us. Grab an equalizer at the very least. 
and very short left back of those slight changes to our wing backs and also going a bit wider in terms of attack there is a highlight albeit a thrown in favor of the Italians and so far they keep the ball well albeit as I say that Paul passed their song forward to the Wayne train and Nikola Ilyev with that 33rd goal of the season just like with the first goal scored by Napoli the far side assistant referee hasn't put his flag up he equals Cock as the record goal scorer for us here at Plymouth Argyle in a season. But that ball looking there for Renato Sanchez gets pounced on by Som. And the Wayne train gets an assist to go alongside his goal from the first half. He is having a heck of a game here in a Champions League final. Wasn't expecting that as he's actually finished the season a little bit roughly in terms of form. But Ilyev slots that one away and it's 2 all with only 20 minutes left. And while we're here... Nestri or Nkunda down to a red heart. Facundo Farias can come on for him. Off the back of us making it to all late in this Champions League final. And now maybe a chance for us here to grab the lead from a set piece. But unfortunately Parola can't quite get his head on the end of it. But Facundo Farias with one of his first touches on the field. That is a screamer into the top right corner. What a substitution. And we make it 3-2 here. A quick fire double. This corner from Gutierrez. Doesn't quite find one of our players there in Parola at the near post, but Parola plays that to Gutierrez. Then it's Farias, and that is a screamer into the top right corner. And to be fair, wasn't actually exactly in the top right corner. Had a bit more room to work with, but puts it away. We make it 3 2 off the back of that. Both our defensive midfielders are down to red hearts. We'll replace those guys to try and make sure we hold on to this advantage. So Randall and Bishop can come on. Now Ilyev drops down to a red heart, but to be fair, still has a chance of grabbing the record for goals by a play here at Plymouth Argyle. We've got 10 minutes left in this game now. Time for us to drop some of those players back to support in our wingers as well, just to make sure that we don't concede a goal, albeit did see before there that Napoli had lost a player through injury. We'll also start to time waste just a little bit here and slow down the tempo. But I do think here, these last 10 or so minutes of this game are going to be played against only 10 men. There's the confirmation. Bakwa did go off and no one came on for him. So Napoli now are down to 10 men. And with only 5 minutes left in this game, now we're going to time waste frequently. Also drop back to not playing quite so wide. And hopefully that will be enough for us to make sure there's no more highlights. And we hold on and pick up the Champions League to make it a quadruple. 5 minutes here of added time. Late highlight, and Napoli here might get a chance to do something on the counter-attack. Raspadori plays that one forward for Di Lorenzo, who is in behind our defense here. Takes on the shot, but thankfully Diamonde just stops him enough there to make sure that Tobias can tip that one over the bar. Off the back of that, we'll drop back to Cautious, just to hope that this highlight gets stopped from the set piece and also go back to a mid-block as well. And we might even put our deep-lying playmaker on to defend just to see if that will help us out at all. Also check if we can put those wing backs on to defend. We can't support is as far back as they can go. So we'll try this for these last two minutes of this game. Hopefully don't get pegged back. So this one does go to extra time, especially as the Wayne train might actually get man of the match in this. An 8.5, the highest rating of any of our players out there. But a corner here for Napoli. They look to go far post, but thankfully Gutierrez, who's been a bit of a midget, from those set-piece situations, especially in that FA Cup final where we did concede, but we deal with that danger, and a Wayne train assist and a goal has helped us on our way to pick up the Champions League at the first time of asking here at Plymouth Argyle, and we complete the quadruple in our fourth season of the save. There's the Wayne train, I think, second in from the left. He's celebrating. Cusper Tobias captain. We actually should have made the Wayne train captain kind of stuffed it up but anyway that's okay we've picked up the Champions League and the quadruple it was a very entertaining game but the Wayne train fully got involved in that one he picked up a goal in the first half and assist nice and early in the second to make sure that Ilya joint Jack Cock is the record goal scorer here at Plymouth Argyle and then Facundo Farias off the bench with an absolute screamer with 20 minutes left to make it 3-2 but there's the confirmation Ben Wayne has won a quadruple and was the player of the match in the Champions League final. Didn't see that one coming. But that is a very fitting way to end the save. We pick up the quadruple off the back of a 3-2 win in the final over Napoli.
and what a way that was to end the safe here at Plymouth Fargo. We complete the quadruple and Ben Wayne picking up player of the match in the Champions League final. There's the proof. We won all four trophies, of course, the Carabao Cup earlier in the season. We beat Chelsea, I believe it was, in the final of that, then went on to win the Premier League and then the FA Cup as well as the Champions League, as you just saw. In terms of the transfers in, for this end of season review, the most expensive one, actually not quite, because Alex Scott, we paid a lot for his average rating, could have been a bit better, but it was Osmana Diamonde who did pick up the signing of the season, 57 million. We were working on him since the second half of last season to try and get him here at Plymouth Argyle instead of him going to someone like Manchester United. Thankfully, their interest waned and we got him the young 23-year-old and he was very good at the back for us this season, especially when playing alongside Lorenzo Perola. 7.0 average rating to be fair. Chris Johnson had a slightly higher average rating, but didn't play as many games. Diamonde was definitely a starter when available, and he picked up signing of the season. Also got some other good players in this season, and some Mardzic. We got some good youngsters in Omelagic as well, but those were some good transfers that did help us on our way to lifting the Champions League as well as the Premier League and the two domestic cups got rid of a fair few players during the transfer window at the start of the season, likes of Tony Springer, Richard Elise, Ethan Laird. These were just players to make sure that we could top up our transfer fund and go after some big guns. Probably the most controversial one was actually Andre Lucas Good Johnson, one of our best players from last season, but that bid from Barcelona just proved a bit too good to turn down. And to be fair, he's not done too much for them. He was transfer listed back in January as well. Or 32 million pounds. We could have got him back if we had the money. We didn't, but still, those strikers that we did play this season did a very good job, including Nikola Ilyev with his 33 goals, and of course the Wayne train with that big performance in that Champions League final to help us on our way to that free to win all four competitions we won this season. I think the big turning point for our entire season did come off the back of that patch of form in late October and November, where we lost games to Leeds United, Newcastle, and Bournemouth off the decade previously, having done quite well beating teams like Liverpool, Tottenham, and Man United in our first couple. It did seem like that patch of form came from nowhere, but off the back of a game in the Champions League against Valencia, where we just managed to pick up a 3-2 win at home, we then went to a standard defensive line instead of a higher one with our 4-2-4 Gagan press, and from there, our form in the Premier League in particular picked up quite considerably did not lose a game off the back of that until that second to last one that we did play in yesterday's episode against Aston Villa, but it did mean we picked up two wins this season over Arsenal, and they proved crucial as they were our closest challenger and only finished three points behind us, but thankfully we only lose four games and do find a way to pick up the Premier League title, the Champions League. The only game we lost in this competition was the first leg of that round of 16 tie against Inter Milan, thankfully came back from that and also did a number quite nicely on Roma in the second leg of the quarters as well. Then got past Man City 3-1 before that narrow 3-2 win over Napoli in the final with that assisting goal from the Wayne train. Also that screamer scored by Facundo Farias, which I think should be up there for goal of the season. The FA Cup, this was pretty comfortable for the most part. First couple of rounds, we took on teams from lower down the pyramid. Then we got into the quarterfinals, just got past Man City, which to be fair, was a pretty nice result, especially considering we rotated our team quite a bit for that game. Also Newcastle United, that semi-final came in a tricky patch in around some Champions League knockout games, and then that 5-2 win you saw earlier over Arsenal in the final, bit of revenge from last season, and the Carabao Cup just squeaked our way past a couple of teams in this competition, but thankfully got the job done after extra time when we did defeat Chelsea in the final back in February and that was how we did complete our quadruple here at Plymouth Argyle going forward our biggest win was the second league of the Champions League quarters when we got past Roma 6-1 in that second leg the match to remember now to be fair hard to go past the Champions League final but that 4-1 win over Arsenal as I said before that did come at a pretty important time having just dropped back to that standard defensive line also, that was quite an important win at the Emirates to make sure that we did pick up the Premier League title come the end of the season. And Facundo Farias' goal there in the Champions League final has been beaten by Serginho Dest one, which did get us on our way to a 4-1 comeback win in the second leg of the Champions League round of 16. 
And here is that goal. We have the ball here off the back of a Fran inside of the final third. Desti actually quite fortunate to get it back, but then a nice curving shot there away from Hill and goal. I think we might have scored some better ones than that, even in that game. So are we with two really good ones late in that half to give us a 3-0 lead at half time? But that was the goal that was given goal of the season. In those end of season rewards, obviously the finance is really good. If you take over the save, you'll have 50 million pounds to spend in the next transfer window. And there's a spare. 250,000 in the wage budget. The reputation as well has gone up significantly off the back of picking up the quadruple up by a full star to now being worldwide reputation. And the top shirt seller was the Wayne Train. Happy days going forward to how we lined up. And to be fair, that does look like the best team that we put out throughout most of the season in the end with Aaron Kunder out left, albeit surprisingly Morgan Whitaker out right over Samadzic. That's somewhat debatable, but of course, Whitaker has been a really good player for us in every season so far. In this save, and did have a 7.04 average rating. So that's the one change to our usual first choice 11, and also actually Bischoff in the DM role over Alex Scott. So a couple of changes there outright and in defensive midfield, but to be fair, those two players were quite good. And we did use them this season. And going forward to the accolades, lots of these, we picked up manager of the month a couple of times, and also Premier League Manager of the Year, the Fans Player of the Year, and Young Player of the Year did go to Nicola Iliev, of course, tying that record with Jack Cock for most goals in the league season at 33. You saw the signing of the season and the goal of the season before most goals, obviously, Iliev with 33. Nestor Aaron Kunda with 15 assists. We're going to sim forward and come back for that in a video on the channel tomorrow. Really interested to see how he gets on off the back of us leaving here at Plymouth Argo because he certainly was a big difference maker in this fourth season of the save. Most player of the matches was Ilya with 12. Highest average rating he got with 7.4. And over on the right-hand side, Kasper Tobias, most clean sheets by a player here in a season at Plymouth Argyle with 19. Ilyev got 12 man of the match awards and that highest transfer fee paid was for Alex Scott of near 96 million. And competition award-wise, the Wayne Train again did pick up the Oceania Footballer of the Season. English Footballer of the Year was Nicola Ilyev as well as Players Player of the Year and the English Players Young Player of the Year and also the Champions League Young Player of the Season, Goalkeeper of the Season in the Champions League. That went to Tobias and Lorenzo Perola. He picked up the Defender of the Season in the Champions League as well. A few of those players did make their way into the overall best starting 11 for the Champions League this season and going forward to the manager timeline. And there you can see all our trophies that we did pick up this season off the back of that big transfer spend that we did make come the start of this season just to try and make sure that we could compete in the Champions League. Thankfully, that was the case and we can finish this save off with a quadruple. Also, as you can see there, picked up quite a few late goals to win games. That was something that we also did quite a bit in our first season of the save when coming up as champions from the championships. That was something that did kind of happen yet again in this Premier League winning season. Some late goals to make sure that we did pick up some wins and get a few more points, which did prove quite important in that title race with Arsenal. But that will do it for the Wayne train. And also before we wrap things up, the overall best 11 here for Plymouth Argyle from the save. They've got rid of the Wayne train, which does seem a little bit harsh off the back of a Champions League Man of the Match final performance, which did help us pick up that trophy. But in goal, Cusper Tobias did make his way in there as the best goalkeeper out left. Miguel Gutierrez outright. Kane Kessler Hayden, very good for us in that first season in the championship in particular. At centre back, Jacob Graves and Reese Williams, those two new centre backs. Can't quite work their way in there in Diamonde and Parola. Defensive midfield, Simon Somon, Tom Bischoff, like you saw before from this season's best 11. Sarawi, our best left winger of the save, apparently. Nikola Iliev in the camera. So they're still going with that 4 2 3 1, which to be fair, we haven't actually played now for quite a while here. At Plymouth Argo, Morgan Whitaker out right. He picked up player of the season the most times in the save. And Damien Pizarro as the striker. A little bit interesting, but of course, with Ilyev as the central attacking midfielder, does mean they can put him in there over the Wayne train. His average rating was probably a bit better, but does feel a little bit harsh on the Wayne train off the back. Of that Champions League final performance also, we have given the Wayne train a new contract here at Plymouth Argyle as well. He will be signing that going in to the start of next season, should mean he will be around here for quite a while, and hopefully... That does mean that he'll be able to get some game time when we do some forward and we can see what he does here.
for the remainder of his career. When we come back for a video, which should be out on the channel tomorrow, hopefully this version of the Wayne Train does quite well, having just picked up a quadruple, but that will do it for the Wayne Train. Hope you enjoyed this save here, this extended early access save on FM24. If you did, kipping it off with that quadruple, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you have enjoyed the series here on the channel and want to keep up to date with the new ones when they do drop, then also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. As I said, I'll come back tomorrow, all things going well, and we'll sim forward hopefully a fair while and be able to give you guys an update on how Plymouth Argyle do get on and also how some of these players do get on in the remainder of these careers. The Wayne Train still only 25 years old, and of course the likes of Nestri and Kunda aren't any older, so some quite good young players here, but I am quite interested to see how they get on and where they might end up. Also, in our under-21s, I believe, there's that really good new gen that we got earlier in the week. In fact, he's in the under-18s. That is Luke James, really high-potential player. We'd quite like to see how he gets on as a homegrown man here at Plymouth Argo. We'll check in on some of those players in tomorrow's episode and also see how Plymouth Fargo do get on off the back of us handing in our resignation. We'll do that right now and just see what happens off the back of that. We'll tell the guys that we don't really want to hang around, albeit they are quite keen on us staying apparently. We'll just tell them we've got no intention of changing our mind. What are they going to do? They're disappointed. They haven't even offered us their increase in our transfer budget which I thought they might do, but that is the end of the Wayne Train. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and as I said, we'll be back tomorrow to do a bit of a sim forward, and also in the early stages of next year, we'll come back and get stuck in to a New Zealand build nation. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.